In this next short podcast, we're going to talk about compounds that are called meso compounds. Meso compounds are spelled M E S O. This is not a meso compound. This is miso soup, spelled completely different. Why do I tell you this? Well, I had a student who I dearly loved. I still love him. His name is Rob Eufer. And whenever I would say miso, he would say miso soup. It got to a point where every single time I said miso, the whole class would recite miso soup. So whenever I say or teach miso compounds, I have to talk about miso soup. So that is my little entry to this podcast. So what is a miso compound? Well, let's look at a molecule and see why it's special. So I'm going to take and draw this 2,3-dibromobutane, okay? And then I'm going to do the little rotation I did when we turned it into Fischer projections. So in other words, I'm going to change the carbon structure like this. The left-hand bromine stays the same. I'll put in the H's. And then this one turns around, and so it's coming out also. And so there's an H over here. We fly above the molecule like we did before when we were making our Fischer projection. And draw our Fischer projection. CH3, CH3 on the bottom. Now when you fly this way, again we have bromine on our left hand side, but we have it on both sides. So now this molecule is different than the bromobutanol we did with the other podcast. It's really easy to see when you have it drawn like this or like this that you have a plane of symmetry in your molecule. So here's that plane of symmetry. Here's that plane of symmetry. It's hard to see when you draw it like this, but once you put it in this kind of perspective, you can see the plane of symmetry. Any molecule that has a plane of symmetry cannot be chiral. Its enantiomer will be completely superimposable. I should say it's not its enantiomer its mirror image will be completely superimposable because an enantiomer has to be a mirror image that is non-superimposable. So if we look at these two Fisher projections and we realize when you take a Fisher projection and do a 180 degree rotation you get the same thing back again. So these two representations of this 2,3-dibromo are exactly the same. They are not enantiomers. So what is a meso compound? A meso compound is a molecule that contains chiral carbons but is not chiral due to symmetry. So if you look, these are chiral carbons they are attached to four different things, but the molecule itself is not chiral. It is not optically active. It cannot have a racemic mixture. It's, you don't put R's and S's on it because it is not chiral because of symmetry. So now when we look at the possible stereoisomers of this 2,3-dibromobutane, there are only three. This one is not an a stereoisomer, it's exactly the same, but the other two, which I will draw here, these are chiral. So I'm just going to set up my Fisher projections. So when you have the bromines on opposite sides of the Fisher projection, these are indeed chiral, and you would put R's and S's on them. So I'm going to do the mirror image of both of these. So realize when we do that 2 to the nth rule, so 2 to the nth is equal to the maximum number of stereoisomers 
you may not have a max that maximum because you will lose some perhaps due to symmetry again these are these will be the relationship between this one up here and this one down here these are diastereomers and these two are enantiomers but these two are identical so we don't count them as stereoisomers the other common kind of meso compound is with rings so if we look at this compound right here 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane. Once again, we have a plane of symmetry right through here. So if it's cis, 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane, it is not chiral. Whereas the two different trans 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexanes are chiral because they don't have a plane of symmetry. So these two are enantiomers of each other. Sometimes I've even seen it written meso dash 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane. Now these two, these would be trans 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane. And to tell the difference between the two, you would do R's and S's on them, or absolute configurations. So let's practice. This side would be 1, this side would be 2, this side would be 3, and the H is going back, so it's the same as what we see, and we see R on that one. So if we look at this, again, this side is 1, this side is 2, this is 3. Now this is the opposite of what we see because the H is coming out at you. So we see S. So this is also R. So since both of these are R, both of these will be S. Now if we look at the 1, 4, either cis or trans. So here is 1, 4, either cis or trans. Let's look and try to decide are these meso compounds? Well, they do have a plane of symmetry, but since the interesting carbons lie along that plane of symmetry, these molecules are not meso compounds because they have no chiral carbons. So neither of these are meso because there are no chiral carbons. And our definition says it has to have chiral carbons and a plane of symmetry. So there's no chiral carbons, so this is not meso. So you never have to worry about R's and S's on a compound that is, well, you can't do R's and S's because one side is exactly the same as the other. So those are meso compounds. Thanks, Rob Eufer, for miso soup.